Folks, I just, well, it was that time of year, I guess. My, um, my ratchet straps for trailers had been uh, thinning a bit. You know, I, as soon as you start to see them fray, I, I throw them away. I like to get all new stuff every year or two, depending on um, how, we're, how fast we're going through them. And I oftentimes get the same things over and over, and I bought a whole bunch. I need to buy a whole bunch more for our other trailer too. This is just for my, my trailers that I have here. But these guys, I went with something a little bit new on, on some of them. For like our skid steer, I mean, get another mini X. Um, but then we have, you know, our tractors that don't really necessarily require this. I know some folks love chains and not using uh, straps at all. I kind of, I like the, the ease of using the straps. Generally, they're quite a bit, uh, well, in all conditions, you know, easier to handle, easier to work with, but this is a combination. So our tie down, our anchor points on both ends have a chain on them. So when we tie it down to the trailer, when we tie it down to the equipment, we have chains there and then just a strap in the middle. So I thought that was something I hadn't tried before. And you'll notice these are actually a little bit thicker. Uh, these are a 5,400 pound working load limit. That's what WLL is. Hang on, I got a phone call. Yo. So WLL, working load limit, 5,400 pounds. These are, what are, what are these, three-inch straps? I think these are three-inch straps. They don't say on here, but most of them are two-inch that I get. But I got three-inch straps this time around. You can see right here, assembly brake strength. Let me turn that this way, make it easier. Assembly brake strength, 16,200 pounds. That's impressive, right? But WLL, working load limit, is 5,400 pounds. That's generally a third, yep, yeah, a third of the brake strength, all right? And so that's what you need to go off of. Don't go off of the assembly brake strength. Go off of the working load limit um, when you're getting straps to secure your equipment, all right? And so I'm not going to give you all the rules, but generally you want to, you do want to tie down on on all four corners of your machine. If you have uh, a loader, typically you want to strap down that loader as well. So uh, check with all your local regulations on that. But something like a, like the JCB Teleskid, for example, that thing weighs around 13,000 pounds. So uh, I put one of these on each corner and we've got basically, what is that? 21,600 pounds of strap working load limit on there holding down that 13,000 pound unit. But if I had a, a two inch strap on there, well, we'll open some of these up and we'll see the working load limit on there too and give that example of how putting a tie down on each four corners may not even get us to the, uh, the weight coverage that we need. Uh, let's see what we got in, in this one here. Hey, we got some different ones. So that's the nice thing about US car cargo control and I am not, I don't have a discount code for you at least not right now on uh, u.s cargo control i'd like to because i think that they make good straps and this is where i've bought most of my straps over the years but you can get different colors you can get different lengths you know how most of these are 25 or 30 foot long well you can get them in um like 10 foot 12 foot 15 foot and so on and then i like to get my different length straps in different colors that way when i'm reaching into the bin i can just look for that same color and know i'm getting the same or what length strap i'm looking for so uh, anyway, we got a whole bunch of these. Look at that. Got a whole, got a whole box of those right in there. You know, and driving in, in the, in Northern Michigan, and I know I'm preaching to the choir with a lot of folks, but man, with the, the salt and everything else in the winter months on these, uh, ratchets themselves, they, unless you can clean them off on a regular basis, which is tough sometimes, they get all wonky and, and, and janky, uh, before too long and sometimes only after a single season. So, but here's a good example of a, uh, a two inch strap, okay? So on this, we've got a 10,000 pound brake strength and a 3,333 pound WLL, all right? So again, a, thir a third of what the brake strength is. And so times that by four, we would be just barely covering if we put a on my JCB teleskid, for example, if we put one on the back, left, back, right, front, left, front, right, we'd be just barely covering the, you know, matching up, having enough WLL to match up with the weight of that machine. 
not enough for me to be comfortable with, I can tell you that. So then you'd have to start thinking about double strapping or find another creative tie-off points and just becomes kind of a headache. So um, you know me, I am not a guy who likes to not have any margin. I want plenty of safety. Uh, so also that's kind of the idea be, between having a tie-off point on the on each corner, right? Instead of just running one strap across the front, one across the back. I've had a strap, a ratchet, a break before going down the road and seeing a strap flying in that scenario. So if you don't have a backup, then you're just a sitting duck if you have to hit the brakes or something else on the highway where you have unsecured uh, load on there. And, and so having that redundancy of multiple straps is gonna give you that safety and peace of mind when you're going down the road because anything mechanical, anything can break. You know, a, a weld can break you know, on a, on a tie down point, on a D-ring, anything can happen. And so having that redundancy is gonna give you and just is really your responsibility when you're taking something down the road for every other driver that's out there. I mean, they're not looking to get a tractor flying in their face either when they're coming towards you. So uh, let's see what else we have going on here. Oh, Ooh, I, better, uh, I better watch how much weight I've got on this little tailgate. that I ordered a bunch of these guys, which I didn't see a, uh, oh, here it is on the other box. Uh, 20, I ordered 20 of the two by 12. So yeah, those are 12 foot long. I like the wire hooks. That's what all mine, mine are. So I did switch. I, I like to think I get smarter over time, right? And so I used to like the J hook, um, is like a flat bracket it'd be like a wide flat bracket and those do fit really great through stake pockets and then back up um, but i don't like the idea of the straps sticking out on a rub rail on the outside of a rub rail and so you know i, I bought a while ago uh, stake pocket d-rings okay and so you can put this bracket down through the D-ring or through the stake pocket, pin it in place and it has a, a hook or a D-ring on top. And then you can secure these hooks right to it, these wire hooks. And so I like that setup a lot better. Uh, there's, no, there's no strap outside the rub rail. And these work great. You know, if, if we're touching a little bit of metal somewhere, um, you, you don't want to put these on sharp edges, but if you're touching a little bit of metal, like on a tractor somewhere, it's not going to rub off paint or gouge anything like a chain would. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of the tractors, pretty much all the compact tractors that we're working with are, oh, 2,000 to 6,000 pounds. So you put one of these on each corner and you're like double, maybe triple um, the capacity of what the tractor is. And so it's a nice, safe way to do it. And 12 foot long means you're not paying for a bunch of extra strap. You don't have to cut them off. We cut them off and then, uh, you know, use a lighter to, to burn the ends and, and melt the, the nylon there. But let's show you, let, let's show you that on a trailer here really quick too, what I'm talking about with those D-rings. I forgot, I was gonna go the other way around. But I've got this parking pad back here now. That's where my trailers are stored. So you can see all these shiny silver things that we have. You can buy them typically in sets of four and they just bolt on, okay? So we'll just, pop this out and take that and boom there you go so you got different holes depending on how deep your stake pockets are all right and then you can pick them up you know say you're you have different pieces that you're loading and you have to move these into different stake pockets to have the right angle uh, for how you're going to strap it down you can quickly and easily adjust that you just put that pin through that's in place and then see so then uh, well i would use the, the side of the ratchet but then you can just hook that right through there all right so instead of how i used to do it and i i prefer not to and you can't hardly fit these things through here but say it went down you well, know i can't even get through there at this point maybe i can go like this just to illustrate 
you know, and then tie down like that. But now you have some exposed, some exposed uh, strap on the outside. And so if you hit something on this rub rail, say you get too close to a, a building or a guardrail or anything, you know, a tree, doesn't matter what it is, you could potentially cut that off. Or if you get into an accident, it's an easier contact point for something to make contact and, and cut this whole strap. And then your loot, your load could shake loose and be in a dangerous situation. And so a lot, a lot nicer to have that right here. No exposure here at all. Okay. Now a lot of trailers already have D rings. It's kind of surprising that these uh, don't, but I know that a lot of the trailers you can have them customized too if you're going to be buying it or you can weld them on and all sorts of ways to do it but i found these work well for me i'm going to show you really quick for those of you new to the channel that haven't seen the uh older videos on how to um assemble one of these it's it's pretty easy i like to generally you know i would hook it up to a trailer i like to stretch it the whole way out and again these are nice isn't that nice only 12 foot long versus like 25 or 30 foot. So just pull back on this handle there, open it the whole way up, okay, as far as it'll go, all right? And then this, you can see how it closes, it closes this way, all right? So this is kind of the outside or the back side of it. And so I'll put the end through. And the problem is, especially with the longer ones, a lot of folks will only put it through a little ways and then start ratcheting it up, ratchet, 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 and then you you wind so much strap around here that you can't, you can't tighten it anymore. And then it makes it a, a pain to try to break it free and everything else. So I just pull as much as I need the whole way through. I'll have it like strapped to the tractor on that end. And then this end, you can see all the extra, it's no big deal. You know, anchor it down here and then you can start. Pulling it closed. And so then when you need to release it, keep an anchor down there and just pull free like this. So a lot easier way to do it. Hopefully that makes sense. I like doing that much more than letting all the stuff wrap around there and then uh, makes it easier to store. Just take it apart if you want to when you're done. Some folks go crazy with that and some don't. Probably depends how how organized you are and how much you want to keep it uh, organized on your end too. But easy way to use a ratchet strap. I think they're really handy. A lot of heavy equipment operators only use chains, but for the lighter stuff like us tractor owners, I think they work really well. But if you see fraying at all on these, throw them away and get new ones. If there's any cuts, you're significantly reducing the WLL, okay? If you got pulled over, that's something, one of the first things that they're going to look for too. They want to see the condition of your straps, among other things. If I can find it, I'll include it too, because there was a guy a while ago that did a, a video, because you get a lot of flack. That's, you know, like many things, there's a lot of opinions out there. And there was a video a guy did um, testing the strength of a strap, if it's perfectly flat or if it has any twists in it. And some folks like to put twists in their strap because it helps prevent the, the wind vibration and rattling. Um, but then other folks say that that weakens, weakens the strap, weakens the security of it and everything else. So if I can find that video, I will post it because um, he was basically proving that it didn't lessen the effectiveness of the strap if it had some twists in it. And it still, it kept the, uh, the wind rattling or wind vibration and all that, the, mo the movement and the motion out of it too. So. U.S. Cargo Control, that's where you get these from. If we can find the stuff on Amazon, I will put that in my Amazon store as well so you have some links there uh, to make it easier for you. But if you're looking for anything for your tractor, an attachment for the front end loader like a grapple or a snow push or a pallet forks, or maybe something for the three-point hitch, a tiller, a box blade, a snow blower, whatever you need, we can most likely help you out. We would love to earn your business too. We ship nationwide every day of the week. You can see what we have to offer at goodworkstractors.com. And if you don't know what size you need or what mount or quick attach you need just shoot us an email we're happy to help i want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time stay safe we'll see you soon